Hey Maryland, we're going to talk about cantilever overhangs today and how to deal with them. If you've got one of these hanging off your house with insulation that looks like this, you're going to want to check this out. Hi, what's up Maryland? I am out here today in Reisterstown and we are getting ready to tackle this cantilever for a homeowner that was feeling a lot of drafts this past winter and wanted us to insulate, take care of this thing for them. I've got Kyle Farrell working with me in the background. Hey, he's what's got up? A, <laughs> he's got a couple different uh, camera angles going and we're just gonna kind of go through step by step and show you what we're doing and how we do it and maybe some of the reasons why the problem is actually happening before we um, seal it and then insulate it and close it back up. When you look at the back of this house, most see that the six windows are shut, but there is one that is wide open and hiding in plain sight, and it didn't take long to prove it. One important thing you gotta remember is that fiberglass insulation won't stop the flow of air. And you can literally just see right up into the house. Well, you're gonna give me a shot of that. Yeah. Turn that light on. Does it go all the way in? Oh yeah, I can look, I can see the duct work too. For a little more perspective, the big problem this homeowner was dealing with was a super cold master bedroom. So let's see how this one went. So I'm starting to take this thing apart so we can insulate it. I usually do, like I'll pull the first piece out and label it one. So it looks like we're up to piece 16. Now I'm curious to see why is this one piece here? Yeah, it's not out even. of all the pieces. Why is this one perforated? Did they just run out? Oh, ah. you're right. You said it earlier. Yeah, terminal. That there is an exhaust. An exhaust. Yeah, it's probably for the the bathroom. Yeah. That was their solution. Was to turn you know, exhaust fan through a vented or perforated piece of soffit. And that's just not gonna work. Now, we're right. gonna figure out where that's going to. Because right. if it's not moisture, it's not a huge deal. However, it's definitely not gonna evacuate that, any kind of smell or anything from the house, so. Yeah, it'll make the second floor stink. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. You can a four inch, and then we'll do a three to four. Three to four, it'll actually give it a little bit more flow right at the end, too. This is what I call a nice blank canvas. So what you doing here? There's a lot of overspray with the foams. Got a sheet of plastic over the siding. That way there's not like blotches. It doesn't get messy or anything. Keep it contained as much as we can. There's a little bit of wind. Should be, should be fine. All right. Okay, let me start again. All right. What's our plan of attack for blocking out these bays? So we're going to use the Skyflex, the same material right here. It's down at the bottom of the truck. Gotcha. Uh, and I'm going to get like a broad measurement. It's 16, 16 on center, so even the shorter bays are going to be less than that. I'm going to wow. go through it. I'm going to count all these bays. It should be 24 to match the pieces of soffit. Right. And then I'm going to cut 24 pieces, 24 blocks that'll fit in a 16 inch bay. Okay. And then if they're shorter, I'll cut them down, trim them in, put them up, and then seal them in place. And from there, we'll do the foam portion. So, by blocking the area with the Skyflex, um, Skyflex and foaming it, what, what are we going to accomplish? So we're going to accomplish an air barrier and then also a thermal boundary. So right now, it's kind of a thermal boundary set in place with the way that the insulation is laid, like right up against the right up against the floor. Right. Some places were were good, some places were bad. Um, but now we're gonna have an airtight barrier that blocks the air from going into the house. Right. So you don't have to worry about like duct sweating, discomfort in the lower level here and then upper level. Right. And then bring the thermal boundary to the floor right here with the spray foam. And then same thing, you don't have to worry about like any discomfort up above or you know going going into the bays at all. Right. Cool. They're pretty solid. Way. And then probably cap this, uh, cap all the ductwork in, which will help performance in the system. 
Right now it's about like R4, R6 bubble wrap. Gotcha. So we're gonna take foam it to the floor, it'll get temperature a lot a lot cooler. Definitely, yeah. Warmer. So it's gonna work a lot more efficiently. Right. Cool. Sweet deal, let's get rolling. Yeah. The Skyflex wrap is a versatile product that we use often in home performance projects. Today we're cutting our pieces to block the cantilever bays. Don't misunderstand this step as the end all be all, it's not. The flexibility of the material allows us to create a blocking that is rigid and ready to be filled in. We staple the pieces in place and we're sure to get everything prepared for the next most important step, the spray foam. So Kyle masked up before he uses the spray foam to be safe. And what he's got going on here is he's just marking four inches so that we can achieve the desired R value, which is 25. And the reason or the way we're getting there is for each inch of this foam, it's equivalent to about six R value. So we're gonna get uh, right about to 25 there with four inches. What is this thing color coded yeah yeah there's actually like writing down on the bottom side you can see um which one's which do fan tips difference between the two so there's a fan tip so it'll spray it like a wide angle and then that's just like a circle so we're gonna use a fan so that we can we grab the spray foam kit and kyle put a full suit on if you ever work with foam, it's important to protect yourself and your clothing. Once the prep work is done, things start to move along very nicely. It's important to stay focused and work at a good pace when dealing with these spray foam kits. Even passes and patience is key to everything turning out really nice. So tell me a little bit about how this part's going. It's going well. So the way that I do it is I spray an even an even span this way, right? Uh-huh. And then one like this, straight back, but the pressure's starting to drop, so I have to drop the passes and you know almost like you're painting a car. Like overlap. Right? Right. And you can go long ways, you can go short ways. You just want to make sure that you're like, you just want to make sure that while you're spraying, you're the same distance away while you're spraying and you're even with your overlaps. Right. Right, so this is like coming out pretty even. And then this one, I'll spray enough to where it'll settle down a little bit, wait until it settles down. Then I'll go back over and spray more to make sure that it matches up with that line because it expands as it's going. Right, right, I got you. So you don't want to overspray because it's really expensive. You don't want to underspray. Right, right. It's like multiple trips. Here, Kyle is encapsulating the supply duct that runs out and over the top of the exterior wall. When it does that, it exposes it so over insulating it and sealing it up a little more than normal is not a bad idea especially since we're pretty much finishing up and we're getting ready to close everything up hey what's up Marilyn? i'm out here in reisterstown finishing up this cantilever spray foam project we're just taking all the plastic down that we use to protect the house and see how much of the um, spray comes off of it and we just want to make sure it doesn't get on the siding when we're doing a project like this. Once uh, we get the plastic down and get everything cleaned up, we're going to start putting the soffit back and try to make everything look like it did before we started. Is it solid? Do it again? Very solid. Sweet. <laughs> That's where the duct is. <laughs> With 
good preparation, cleanup is a breeze. So as the day has progressed here, we are getting to the end and we got to put the soffit back. We're going to start back where we ended taking it down. And the first few pieces were a little more difficult, so we'll see how this goes. Getting the soffit lined up straight at the start is going to ensure a smooth reinstallation. Great. That's good. And talk to me on um, why are you leaving a little play there? Um, if you put too much pressure on it, it'll be bubbly. You just want it to like hang freely. So you usually do like one right in the middle, see where it's setting. Mm -hmm. And if it's flush, like good, I'll just leave it as yeah, is. I did a lot of siding jobs in my day. Right. And somebody taught you right along the way, and the reason why you were right, it's going to get wavy if you hit it flush, because what happens with plastic when it's hot and cold? Right. Oh, the track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why you got to leave a little play with the nail so that it has a little room to move. That's the key. Right. Got it. With expansion and contraction. Tell me about how you're going to take care of this. This, I can see it right here. Uh huh. So, what I'm going to do is right at the center of it, I'm going to drill a four inch hole and I'm going to put that term that I have over uh, my back of my truck right now, gotcha. a four inch soffit term, and it'll match right up to it. And I actually have, they come with them. They come with the roof terms. It's like a three to four inch little like rubber piece that'll sit on the inside. Yeah. And then it'll press up around the, the three inch pipe. Cool. And hold it tight. Yeah. Let's take a look at it. Yeah. yeah, so I'm gonna do that now while I still have it open and I'm able to like gotcha. get to everything. Okay. At first, I wasn't even really quite sure myself exactly how this was gonna get done. Even though I'm around this stuff every day, they make these things so that when they're in place, they're practically invisible in terms of how they're put together. So let's check it out. Hey. Sweet. <laughs> nice job. I don't know how, uh, What's up? A magic eraser. Oh, we'll get all the other marks off of. There we go, yeah. So that's like dead, dead yeah. center. Nice. So is that just a connection that just stays loose? What do you mean? The the way that the oh I see the it's coming in and you're gonna seal it from down. But, oh okay. Yep. Oh, yep. Okay. Well, oh no, the, there's like a, a little piece of. Uh, well, I can I can seal it from below too. Yeah. I, mean, I think I'm understanding. Yeah, it'll. Uh, there's if a, I shift this. There's supposed out. to be a, like a space between the duct and the end of that fitting. Yeah. And something goes in between. Yeah, there's like a little screw piece that goes in and does it have screws any in. like play in it or? What do you mean? Or does it have to be perfect? <laughs> um, it'll go. It'll work. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. It'll work exactly the way that it is. Is that piece on your truck? Yeah. You want me to go yeah. get it? Is it that white piece? Yeah. Should I get it now or no? Yeah. I'll get it now. It was like a little foam gasket, huh? Yeah, to seal it.
And it literally just like screws on to this. Oh, you know what? What's wrong? I may have to break this piece off. Yeah, that one inside piece. It's like getting in the way. There you go. And I'm gonna have to seal it from the outside. It won't fit. Ah. It won't fit in there to be able to. So now you gotta go. Up I'm gonna there. tape it from the outside. Oh, you gonna tape it up top? Yeah. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. So that's in. Yeah. That's and then I'm gonna seal it. Yeah. Well, it's it's in. I'm just like rough fitting it in I right gotcha, now. I got you. I got you. I'm rough fitting it, and then this will be. You're gonna it. use foil tape. Yeah. A flex foil tape. I'm gonna yeah. screw it in, and then I'm gonna use flex foil tape to get around the top there. Yeah. To get that situation up there rectified. Yeah, it wouldn't go in with this, see, because there's a little piece that like. Yeah. It's not working right. I see. So you're zapping it with a couple screws. Yep. Yep, just hold it in place. And this one should be right on the joist. Should. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna loosen it a little bit. See how it's like. Yeah. Fiberglass that runs through the middle of it. Uh -huh. That like sturdies it up. That's tight, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Nah, yeah. yeah. So we just finished up here. Uh, we are in Rice Church Town. We finished up with the cantilever you see in the background, me and Kyle. And <laughs> I think it was a pretty overall successful. Good. Yeah, yeah it was really good. Yeah, really I think good. it was really nice. It looks good. Customer seems happy. We showed them progress uh, about halfway point. We'll show them here at the end, um, pictures and things like that. But overall, job well done. And we're just looking more, uh, forward to the next one. So thanks. See you later. See ya.